Hello, welcome back to the L1 show. Today is October 6th. It's not really, it's October 7th, but you can leave a comment below <laughs> about how I'm wrong and you're so smart. We're desperate for the engagement, but you can get your points for the cult of engagement. Yeah. The cult of the algorithm. Ooh, the cult of engagement. <laughs> That's a good name. Has anybody done that before? I'm sure. There's probably like a wiki for that kind of thing, right? Let's rename our, our patrons and <laughs> float plan people to the cult of engagement. Ooh. Well, let's talk about some robots. And first we have Cassie who runs. My pedal Cassie says the Guinness Book of World Records for a robotic 100 meter sprint. Okay. It was not competitive <laughs> with the human time. But in terms of robots, very impressive. Just crapping all Ooh. over spot. Thick thighs save lives. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> she got junk. <laughs> That's uh literal junk in the truck. <laughs> Chad walks like a deer. It'd be hard to design a chair. 27.72 seconds. They pointed out that the running was actually the easy part. Hard part, stopping. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I feel think that about way. It, yeah, like if you think about all the little uh, tiny adjustments you make when you're stopping when you run. And you can like feel it in your ankles and stuff. Cassie struggles with it. But she can do it now. Probably not very quickly. <laughs> How many times do you think that robot just went like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the video you want to see right yeah cassie's failures and uh boy the hot link sharing thing to do now other than these links which you should obviously share is uh dolly and generational image platforms people are just loving it and i, I think we've entered an age where you're never going to know where, whether a, an image was real or not right mm -hmm. yeah like this is the videos are going that way too mark it down on your calendar and it's going to get worse. OpenAI removes the wait list for Dolly 2, allowing anyone to sign up. So if you've been anxious, now's your time. Kyle Wiggers giving us the good news. The other guy I love who we see in these articles a lot, it's like John Fingas. Jay Fingas. Yeah. yeah. And, I like uh, seeing his. Mariella Moon, who has that little, uh, her headshot is cut off at the nose. Oh, so it yeah. looks like she's a dog peeking over the. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is fascinating stuff. Remember the ion drives that were supposed to take us into space? And there was some uh, controversy about them cheating on that, right? Yeah. But this one, they got a video. Drone startup claims it flew a zero emission ion propulsion system drone for four and a half minutes in test flight video. Silent Ventus. It's, it's, not, it's ionizing the air. It's, it's not flying real high. And that, it wasn't it they also said it was 45% more efficient than any other documented ion drive? That is their claim, yes. They say that without that, then terrestrial flight would be impossible. So you have to overcome the weight. They're not talking about putting people in these, but maybe drone delivery. That uh, image looks so surreal. I mean, it has a shadow and everything. It just doesn't, it looks. I wonder how much noise it makes. Maybe because the horizon and the bottom are lined up, it should overlap to feel more well most people have an almost innate like lizard brain negative response to like the sound of electricity or like a high energy electrical field and uh it's probably something that sounds like that what do you think what do you think the evolutionary pressure was to avoid those kinds of things lightning <laughs> yeah but it wouldn't be whining by the time you got to it uh, i've got a uh, you know, the original 1980s doorbell in my house. And that thing, the coil line on that thing is intense. <laughs> actually, the 70 decibels, that's pretty quiet. Yeah. They actually told us in the article I just saw. So, interesting. And uh, now, you remember the, we had uh, a couple of years ago, they had a salt gun that was a microcontroller. Yeah. And it would shoot down mosquitoes. Yeah. Or flies and stuff like that. I suppose this is the arms race <laughs> against our, our insect uh, enemies. Selective neutralization deterring cockroaches, but with laser automated machine vision. So this is just one of those high energy lasers and somebody built a thing to vaporize cockroaches. There's a lot of pic Here's the flow chart of how it decides whether to kill or not. <laughs> but the best one is the little crispy, crispy guy when it was done. Uh, there's so many, but this is an actual stuff. Here we go. Yeah. There it is. Ugh. There we go. So B, he was alive. C, crispy from laser. Oh, <laughs> we need that for uh, for house flipper too. When that comes out uh, and you have to like clean up the cockroach, you should have this. That's going to be so cool when an exterminator comes to your house with a van load of those things and they just set them up in the house. They're like, all right, you know, come Monday, <laughs> we will have neutralized all of the insects in your house. 
But don't you need to take poison back to the nest? Because there's going to be another generation always waiting. Oh, yeah, that's true. Interesting, though. The door open again. Oh, hang on, chat. There is a party next door. Oh, I'm so hungry. I'm, I can't say that to you, but I'm going to. <laughs> I'm not actually. I've gotten so used to it. Yeah. I, I won't actually even start thinking about food till like five o'clock. I need, I had some cereal earlier, but I'm hungry again. But once I hit that psychological threshold of 6 p.m., like. You're like a cat. I can't even wait for things to cook. I have to start prepping my meals before then so they'll be ready by then, or I'll just start eating random chips and stuff. Yeah. Well, robots, of course, we were told years ago that the robot revolution would not disrupt our employment at mm. all. That we would work with the robots and they would not replace us. That has not proven to be true. We also said that America would lead the way in robotics and we'd have this beautiful utopia where we just sat around and did what we wanted because the robots did all the work. Also has not panned out. Almost half of industrial robots are in China. Five-year plan aims to have robots com uh, compensate for the country's decreasing workforce. Okay. Why is the workforce decreasing? Because they're getting old. People are living longer. I thought that was Japan. Well, I mean, everywhere. Is China to reach the point where their population is shrinking now? Yes. Okay. The one child policy was catastrophic. Oh, right. Yeah. But not only that, but we got the, the buy lawn. Mm. People don't want to work. They want to buy lawn. And uh, I did not realize that, I guess even in the video games, it has always been James Earl Jones. What a trooper. Anytime there's, I mean, it's easy work, right? Yeah. Probably fun too, but that's just amazing. They got him for everything. James Earl Jones steps back from voicing Darth Vader, signs it off on using archived recordings to recreate the voice with AI. Ugh. Disney just salivating right now. Yeah. Oh, so he has signed the contract with Disney. Yeah. From now on, they can just simply recreate his voice. You know what would have been a better Star Wars series than the prequels? The uh, Knights of the Old Republic video games. I think those were books too, right? I'm not a Star Wars person, so someone will correct me. But you're technically what you just said is true, but almost any answer would have been true. <laughs> <laughs> also, James Earl Jones, ninety one. Wow. So that means he did voice work for Vader when he was 90, and it sounds just as crisp as when he was a young man. Interesting. Piece. I bet in the future, Disney will work into contracts, like yeah. you're a new starlet and you're going into Disney, and it's like Absolutely. you have to use, mm -hmm. you have to agree to be an AI robot voice. We, we get the next five years of your AI. I'm, yeah. I'm honestly surprised that there hasn't been a Sonny Bono act about AI and AI-derived things sponsored by the disney corporation saying that things that disney makes with ai are copyrightable <laughs> and that uh they uh you know own the rights in perpetuity for all those things to so go ahead and clear up any legal ambiguities now yeah if you if you act for disney you're like locked in with them forever yeah i mean this is coming and this is the insidiousness like we have to we as citizens have to rise up and stop this before it happens because good lord what, a, what it's just, it's, well uh, i'm afraid you're too late yeah actor bruce willis becomes the first celebrity to sell rights to a deep fake firm which is called deep cake ah, ha, ha. so uh bruce has some uh mental issues and so he will no longer be doing any of his own acting and so what they did they made an ad already they've actually used him already and here it is you should I, watch the ad actor on the left results deep fake on the right looks pretty good matches him up pretty good if you're the actor that doesn't get to be fully there, though, that's got to be a little disappointing. I mean, it's quite a bit of a parallel to James Earl Jones, right? Because the guy in the suit famously got screwed yeah. on the royalties for Star Wars, whereas James Earl, I think, did quite well. Mm. And with all these new uh, speech AIs and stuff like that, why not a universal translator? Why can't we have it? And OpenAI is working on it. OpenAI open sources Whisper, a multilingual speech recognition system. Can't wait for somebody to put this on a tiny battery powered thing that just fits behind your ear. That would be it would be great, but I also wonder how feasible it is with how fast language transforms at this point. Think about how mm. much slang comes out just from TikTok over the course of like a month. Yeah. 
there's so many things I've said accidentally. And then it's like, oh, that actually has a double meaning now because there's some new slang term like touch grass. <laughs> or ooh woo. Ooh woo, yeah. Would a how, translator understand ooh woo? No, how could it? Even even just basic things. I remember very clearly from a family in Quebec, you know, it's like there are French words for things, and he would ask, you know, you're having breakfast and he would ask, you know, what you want you want jam or jelly for your toast, and you would ask where the preservatives are in French. That's not what that means. Oh. That's where is the condoms. Well, even there's a oh. <laughs> even there's a in English even like British versus U.S. English. There's like the fanny pack, and people in Britain are like the what? Or <laughs> bloody. Uh. It's like, do Americans keep the condoms in the fridge? Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> it's just so refreshing. <laughs> oops. Uh, it's my personal oops that sticks with me for a long time. Oh, because you made that mistake. Well, up in space, we've been throwing stuff at rocks. NASA's DART spacecraft hits uh, its target asteroid in first planetary defense test. Oh, there's a picture. There is. There's actually a great gift that's been going around. Oh, <laughs> uh, We will not know whether or not this was successful for quite some time because very slowly we have to observe its orbit, see if it's changed. Man, they didn't. I don't remember that part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> they came back five years later. <laughs> Some of the people were dead. Uh, this sounds good, I guess. I mean, I, when we get all these new uh, AI-based health screening apps, I mean, I guess it's good, but I can't help but think about the bad times. And I can't, can't help but think about the people of China. Because this is going to be like a drug dog, right? <laughs> the app is going to be doctors. So like, That's how oh. I feel about anything AI. That they're like, oh no, it's perfect. The algorithm will be perfect. And I'm like, yeah, but it's made by humans, and humans are not perfect. Yeah, something tells me that if you say anything bad about Xi Jinping, and then you have a little cough afterward, your phone might beep at you and say, oh, we've detected something. <laughs> Please report to the hospital. Pfizer pays almost 120 million dollars for an app that detects the thing. From just the sound of your cough. It also can do uh, pneumonia, I think bronchitis. Uh, tuber yeah. uh, tuberculosis, right, I think. Mm -hmm. Any kind of lung disease. <laughs> Are you going to be like that meme of that guy who's like trying not to cough? And it's like... <laughs> 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 well, you know, we already talked about this, right? You have to sand walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like you have to like maybe do fake coughs or something. And there was another thing. I think the hands movements, right? Yeah. You have to do hand movements. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the human inflatable wacky wanking blue man. No. The future of James Bond is just going to be like <laughs> crip walking and waving his hands and coughing. Uh, there, I don't know if it was one of the James Bond movies, but there was a movie where um, the protagonist put a thing in his shoe so that one of his feet would be more uneven from the other one to mess with his gait so they would have a harder time detecting him. They say that about Putin. Right? Like he's got a weird gait. Some people say it's because the KGB were always trained with their gun hand to stay still. Huh. And other people say it's because he has horrible cancers. Mm. Or maybe he's wearing platform shoes. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> One platform shoe. <soon. laughs> I, I do like the meme that has emerged on Reddit that he's like 5'7". <laughs> I think he's actually, I mean, fairly no, short. When you see those yeah. uh, world leader shots, I mean, he, I don't think he's incredibly short, but he's not a tall man. So. Yeah. And then they're also doing the, the giant the the uh, always sunny joke where it's like the giant rubber hands. Yeah, <laughs> don't look, nobody <laughs> look. <laughs> well, for whatever reason, we've had a lot of attention with Venus lately. Seems like you think maybe internally they're like, hey, you know, we've looked at the numbers and we've looked at where the economy is going. We're not doing Mars. <laughs> Let's try to reset expectations. Target Venus, not Mars. Her first crewed mission to another planet. Experts say. So one of the experts they pulled was an economist. And I was like, I don't know if I want to hear his thoughts on this. So one of the things is that we might be able to have a spacecraft or a habitable thing that just floats in the Venusian uh, atmosphere that is pressure and reasonable gravity for what we're used to. How would we dock with that? You wouldn't. They said, <laughs> they said in the article, like, actually putting people on the surface of Venus, absolutely not happening. It yeah. would be like a flyby mission. Now they do say you can slingshot around it and gain a lot of easy speed to get to Mars. So maybe that moon station, maybe do the moon station, then do the Venus station. 
Then go to Mars. Gas station. Bucky's. <laughs> International Bucky's. The, the Venusian Bucky's is the superior Bucky's. Because you're going to be out of uh, moon nuggets by the time you get to <laughs> yeah, Venus. Yeah. Got to restock. For sure. And unfortunately, uh, shout out to our viewers in Florida. You're probably not watching. <laughs> <laughs> they might be. Maybe if they Hope took shelter. Hope Maybe northern, okay. northern Florida. You know what? They're probably with their friends and family in northern Florida, all Hopefully. packed into the, a tiny house watching this together. So uh, our condolences, and unfortunately, that had an effect on NASA. NASA waves off the next Artemis One launch attempt due to a tropical storm. It was a Category Four hurricane, <laughs> but okay, a tropical storm. We'll, we'll call it, it that. This was Saturday, so they actually canceled it well before. Oh, okay. Yeah. They saw the weather models, and they didn't so like it. Was it was not good. Yeah. God, I love this one. <laughs> this was just, like. I have He's in this, San Francisco. Who knew? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have this theory that this is only going to get worse because, you know, as we spiral downward, they're lowering that bar. Yeah. You remember how Amazon was like, maybe yeah. we should take the meth heads. Yeah, I think that's happening in public service as well. Alameda Sheriff strips 47 deputies of service weapons, admitting that they failed psych exams and probably shouldn't Oof. have been hired. The great thing about this is it's not like they got different results. They're like, oh, no, we got there was a mix up and we gave you the wrong results. They just thought that they were like, well, this is a D-plus student, but we're allowed to take those, right? So let's just get 47 D's of them. D's get degrees, am I right? <laughs> and now they're talking about, like, well, what do we do? Because we can't just fire everybody and start over. So they're actually probably just going to end up lowering the bar again. Wow. I don't, I don't know that this is necessarily a terrible thing if it results in a restructuring of law enforcement so that we don't get... I think that... There is a place for people that know how to handle weapons and blah, blah, blah. But I also think there's a place for people that can deal with just like the low level clerical stuff. But and that, they, they don't need to be carrying weapons. They don't need to be paramilitarized. Para but the psych eval is like, you know, I think they're expecting you to do uh, just baseline, like not use your power. <laughs> right. right. To be able to de-escalate a situation and not just immediately rely on your weapon. I guess what I'm saying is that the police force would be better if it were structured such that if you have people that have a predisposition to abuse their power, that it's structured in such a way that they have a really hard time doing that without being noticed. You know what's crazy is those uh, interrogation videos. The ones that are cops are very regularly them communicating with underaged girls. Yeah. Usually. And you got to think, like, how is it? During your investigations, when you're unlocking phones and stingraying people, you don't apply that to your own situation. <laughs> you go ahead and send the pic to the young girl. Yeah. Like, how did you not? Yeah. I guess they're just overcome with lust. Uh -huh. But uh, that's who should fail these exams. No, I don't think it's that they're overcome with lust. I think it's literally that they, the standard MO is that they regularly operate above the system. And so it's irrelevant. It literally does not matter to them. Yeah, they don't, oh. they don't think it'll happen to them. Do you think it's possible that they view our leadership and see them doing that exact thing? Yeah. And then are influenced by that? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We can't even get a simple, like, don't want spam text messages. Nobody wants spam text messages. Seems like it would be the easiest thing in the world to fix the technological loopholes that allow people to be spammed. And we can't even do that. So imagine how deep the corruption runs on things that are actually important. Well, was it two weeks now? We've had uh, official confirmation from our lovely president that the time, the bad times are over. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> we have now moved in, but he was not the only one to claim victory. North Korea announces a nationwide mask mandate weeks after their uh, victory, quote unquote, with the thing. Look uh, at the, the, the leading, the letting on the, the headline here. You could drive a bus through that. Tight, that the, tighten up the line height. This, oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's something that's not inherent to the font. That's just their choice. Yeah, it's a, it's a CSS setting. Well, uh, nostalgia is a weird thing. I can't say that I, I experienced this. What about you, Wendy? I, I saw this, and it, it, it didn't, doesn't make the right noise, so it ruins it for me. <laughs> <laughs> we are not the same. <laughs> this frequency is like 0. 0.3 off. <laughs> Tiny Dongle brings the hard drive song back to updated retro computers. Wendell, you can't like tell the difference in music, but that yeah, you're no. like, no, that's not right. No, listen, you don't understand. Like the most glorious sounding hard drives uh, among them was like the ST225. And that, that hard drive was almost musical because you not only could hear the seek clicking, but that was from the days of stepper motors before voice coils. 
And so you could hear the clicks of the stepper motor, but you also heard the metallic whir of the ceramic reed right head floating across the, uh, the, the platters inside the hard drive. And it was a very interesting, you can actually look it up on YouTube. It's like, it's, you know, it's like, a, it's, it's very interesting. Someone me, sample that for a techno song. <laughs> to me, that was always just like, oh, that's going to fail eventually. <laughs> yeah. I can't continue forever. Yeah. Or uh, another really distinctive sounding hard drive was K-Lock. It was a, a brand that no one's ever heard of be before, probably. But like the K-Lock mechanical hard drives, like those were something. They Those sounded like, you know, cats in a blender. And they, they did not last very long. Usually, I don't believe you've ever heard cats in a blender. <laughs> what I imagined cats in a blender to be like. Subscribe to our Patreon for more <laughs> sounds like cats in a blender. I should hook up some of these. I actually have, I still have some, uh, some ST 9000s. Those are five and a quarter inch full height mechanical hard drives. And their read write head assembly is so massive. It, they're real chonkers and it's a very satisfying sound that they make. This thing is just a click out of a piezo speaker. It's very unsatisfying. Well, I've pretty much given up on, uh, you know, the like fusion and insane battery tech stories because guess what? They never pan out. <laughs> Something seriously wrong with this room temperature superconductivity study. So it's been retracted. Uh, this is only room temperature superconductivity on a microscopic scale, but it had a lot of promise until no one could replicate it. They stand by it. But I don't know that I believe it. It's like, well, you left out some steps. Can you give us the missing steps? Now, Krista, you're a big art fan. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. When you go to a museum, do you feel peace, tranquility? Um, It depends on the museum. But usually, as a rule, museums are usually pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they're big echoey spaces. They're kind of peaceful places to be. Do you, you often talk about, like, needing to recharge mentally? Yeah. Do you feel like... A museum is like a Tesla station for your your mind. I feel like being outside is more that way, but I can see a museum being that way. Maybe that's prescribe prescribe that instead. They do that. Uh, museums on prescription. Brussels test cultural visits to treat anxiety. Wait, who does that? Japan. Oh. The Japanese people. I think they started doing it in the eighties. I can't remember the word for it, but it's like going out in nature, like into trees for like fifteen. They call it forest bathing. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah, you could do the Zen garden thing, too, where you move the sand around. Yeah. Well, that's not what they're doing here. <laughs> museums on prescription. Brussels test cultural visits to treat anxiety. So you go to a museum and treat your anxiety. Not just a museum, though. I think there's some other, uh, there's dun, other dun, locations. Dun, dun. But, yeah, if you if you tell them, like, yeah, I'm just I'm stressing out. I'm feeling it. I'm a little downtrodden. They could be like, yeah, just go look at some paintings. I don't think it would work for me. What about uh, an aquarium? No, a cat maybe. Do you, do you really don't feel like real? I feel, I guess it depends. If there's a lot of people at the aquarium, I don't feel relaxed. But if it's like a slow day and I just go to the aquarium and watch the fish, I think that's very relaxing. If I could be alone in an aquarium. Yeah. I would probably be peaceful. It's a nice. Although I think I'd get bored. Really? Yeah. Who doesn't like to watch fish? I watch fish for like 20, 30 minutes. And, and then just uh -huh. I'm ready to do something else. Well, uh, once again, I don't remember us explicitly saying anything about this, but it's certainly how I felt. And I like to believe that we predicted this as well, because my God, of course this didn't work. <laughs> I'd rather eat an actual burger while the plant-based meats sizzle fizzled in the U.S. You know what? Actually, we have the perfect uh, test here because Wendell having some issues eating meat. And when I brought this up to him, he was just like, oh God, no, no, <laughs> I did. I did. There's a. Uh, there is a Beyond Meat uh, thing at Panda Express for their little their chicken things. No, oh. it's not great. Uh, see, mm -hmm. I'll ex I've experimenting with like vegetarian or vegan meals, and I find that stuff that tries to be meat is never as good as just something that doesn't try to be meat. Now there was mm -hmm. there was a frozen fake turkey patty um, that was not Beyond Meat. It Impossible. Was, maybe. But it was, and it's available at the grocery store and it comes in, it's a, it comes in a green and yellow package and that was actually edible. It tasted vaguely like turkey. What would you say the one thing, if you had to put your finger on one thing that's wrong with the Panda Express chicken, what is it? Is it texture? The, the, the Beyond chicken? The one that you just said you tried. From yeah, yeah. It's, uh, 
when you eat it, you know something is immediately wrong, but it's ambiguous as to what it is. It's like you're eating you you a eat, mystery box of flavor. You, you eat something, and it's like the texture. It's not that the texture is wrong. It's that the texture is like uncanny valley. Like you have that kind of a mm. of a reversion to it. Have you ever had the uh, the alcohol sugar keto ice cream bars? It's the exact same experience. Oh. Your brain is like, ooh, sugar. And then 20 seconds later, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Something's this, wrong. I don't know what's going on here. I'm confused. But take another bite. I find a lot of the plant-based meats, they uh, they feel dry. Like they're overcooked. The breading, so, but it was every aspect of it. It's like the flavor, like the coating and the flavor at first is delightful. And then like the breading separates from the meat in a sort of an unnatural way. And then the meat sort of breaks down in your teeth in kind of a weird unsettling way. And then it's like, did I just get a piece of gristle? Like you're, you <laughs> know, a you, root. Yeah. A root. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what, you know, what was that? And then the more you chew it, the more it becomes completely unlike what chewed food food product you're used to chewed food product feeling like. That's it's, I just rather would eat like a vegetable based thing. Yeah, if it if it somehow became a salad, like if you took the bite and then it felt like you were chewing a piece of lettuce, I think it would be better. Yeah. Well, apparently you guys feel exactly like the rest of the world because those companies have dropped one of them uh, 70% from the highs and Big companies like McDonald's are just saying, eh, we're going to cancel this. My, People don't want it. Honestly, my favorite thing is is I've I've actually discovered a joy uh, in beans and rice and lentils. Like lentils. And you can combine beans and rice and lentils in one bowl and it's really good. Or like quin- quinoa and beans with a little bit of rice. It's, just, it's delicious. Edamame is really good too. It's no, so good. That is going to result. This might be a, a TMI type situation, but that's going to create an incredible amount of fermentation in your yeah, in your guts. So are you feeling it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Healthier. I don't know. Maybe the Beyond Burgers do that too, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, uh, here's an unsung hero of the animal world. I bet you didn't know that these were fighting climate change. Vultures prevent tens of millions of metric tons of carbon emission each year. Vultures get a bad rep. But their for their ways, but their dietary habits prevent a lot of bad stuff. They're scavengers. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, you should check out the. There's a documentary on the wolves they introduced to Yellowstone. Oh yeah, that totally it revolutionized changed. everything about how that the whole <laughs> ecosystem worked. Yeah, and it, for the good, like for the better, it was amazing. It's I the feel same kind of thing. Vultures, you know, we do judge them for their diet for sure, but also because they are hideously ugly. <laughs> they also tend to carry off like cattle and stuff. <laughs> like baby cattle. That's one of the only animals you can shoot year round in Kentucky. Well, maybe we should stop. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should worship them. They're performing an important service. Like coyotes or wolves. You can also shoot coyotes year round in Kentucky. Actually, coyotes are bad. Wolves are good. Yeah. Now, when it comes to uh, doctors or therapists, if they tell you about something that will put another human being in danger, they're excused from confidentiality, right? Kind of makes sense. Danger to yourself or others. And those are things that you, well, maybe not therapists, but a doctor, you have to go to at some point. Yeah. You don't have a choice, <laughs> which makes this one a real head scratcher. Ohio exempts clergy from reporting abuse. This is ridiculous. Maybe, can we train the clergy on basic medical practice? Would that be a thing? <laughs> How does that help? But it's like, maybe you can... You can uh, triage the beaten wife. What, no, like the, the Roe versus Wade thing. Like it might exempt them from having to do that. And then they can protect women's reproductive stuff. That would be cool. I don't think they're too interested in that. Uh, Generally, the churches, you know, don't. Catholics, maybe. But, you know, we can the other churches. It depends on the denomination. But I wouldn't want to trust it. <laughs> That's dumb, though. They shouldn't have to report. If you were if you're ultra religious, then. Having, you know, somebody's like, no, someone of the, you know, someone of the cloth is going to decide whether or not you can get an abortion. Then you would probably be okay with that, even though that's another sort of thing that's wrong on another level. But it's just like, oh, there's a lot. Well, I don't know that we're necessarily talking about abortion here. I think we're talking about like. No, yeah, no, it's much Yeah, much you can worse. say, you could talk to, in confession and be like, I thought about killing someone. I guess, yeah, I don't know. I was trying to figure out how to weaponize that. 
to turn it back into something that then they would be like, oh no, the, the clergy has to, has to tell people about that. How wild is it though, that the human mind gets so oppressed by secrets and guilt that they have to tell somebody. Yeah. Yeah. What, what evolutionary uh, pressure <laughs> created that situation? Cause we bolted all this extra <laughs> stuff onto a reptile brain and it doesn't work <laughs> right all the time. Speaking of reptile brains, uh, here's a public service announcement. I'd like to do this once in a while. All charities are scams. <laughs> all of them. Charity, a cancer charity boss who spent donations on a giant dragon statue ordered to the redistribute the cash. Not give it back. Not get a refund for the giant dragon statue, but whatever's left. Let's not be hasty. Let's keep the dragon statue. <laughs> well, here's the thing about it. it looks kind of cool, huh? Never was built. That's an artist rendering. There was no dragon statue. The money was just blown. What? Yes. But he doesn't have to give it back. He intended for that to be a tourist attraction to make money back. But no, these are just renderings. So they didn't even actually make it? Doesn't exist. That's disappointing. Yeah. I mean, you shouldn't steal either way. But if you stole and made a sweet dragon statue, there's part of me that's like, okay. I don't, I don't know that in his mind he was stealing. I think he believed that he was going to build that and it was going to be amazing. And then that was going to bring more money into the, to the charity. And then he would get to live in a sweet dragon tower. Isn't that all we, any of us want? That's all I've ever dreamed. <laughs> well, uh, have you guys seen, I have seen this picture. No, but I mean, have you seen all the videos of the, the reporters like struggling against the wind and holding their head. And then in the background, people are just like walking. Yeah. Around, I've seen like, those getting before. into cars and stuff. There's so many this year, and plus a bunch of resurfaced from, I guess, 2018 when they had a bad hurricane. And this is just another and a long line of those hilarious hurricane footage memes. Florida reporter defends putting a condom on her mic as she uh, was broadcasting during during Hurricane Ian. I'm surprised it could still pick up sound that good. I'm also surprised by that, but I mean, uh, keeps it waterproof. But... <laughs> Did the microphone belong to the studio, or was she an independent contractor? <laughs> well, <laughs> she's at the clearly at the news station here. So, uh, yeah, she claimed that you can't get them wet, and which seems like a weird like. Why would you take a microphone that you can't get wet on location? Because the because she's a contractor, and she there, didn't want to buy the right thing. Is there any mic that you can get wet? I'm sure you know on so, to some degree, maybe not like submerge it but i mean because there's like action cameras that you use for like hiking and backpacking and you know riding a bike but i don't know about a, just a standalone mic now in terms of protecting the mic i don't know i guess it works probably a good idea but in terms of getting her attention and getting her name out there did work moving her up in the newscaster world huge coup right there yeah good job i can't remember her name kyla gaylord I watched, uh, I like watching hurricane live streams. I watched Jeff Petrowski, I think is how you pronounce his name. His was not that great this year. I thought it was wild. Remember when we had the floods and they showed the power lines that had been pulled down by uh, just like diapers and trash from our creeks and rivers? Yeah. In those Florida port towns, they'd all been torn down by boats. Yeah. <laughs> the boats had been dragged. And yeah. Well, then they said, uh, I think in Tampa Bay, all the water got drained out before the hurricane hit. And then of course got came up real big storm surge. Yeah. That's terrifying stuff. Yeah. I would not want to live on a coastline like that because it's a matter of time. We have seen a lot of uh, our politicians who have tried to avoid the legal system and apparently successfully, which is disgusting. Texas attorney general, Ken Paxson fled his home to avoid being served <laughs> with a subpoena court record says they'll never catch me. So the guy, the, the guy serving the papers showed up and uh, the wife answered the door and she was like, oh, he's on the phone. He'll be out in a minute. And he was like, well, I'm not going anywhere. I'll wait till he comes. And then she came out, opened up the passenger door, started the truck, and the guy just like ran out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it doesn't look like this guy's got a really strong sprint either. No. So I think he has still managed to avoid it as of now. On Fox News, they did some hurricane coverage, and I believe, I don't know, I don't think he was doing this on purpose. Maybe he was, <laughs> but I guess you have to be more conscious about this kind of thing. Oops. Fox News meteorologist draws a giant uh, on screen during hurricane coverage. 
And there's an emoji covering it, but you can use your yeah. There you there go. There it is. I don't think we <laughs> did we really get caught for that. Uh, I mean, if just the line in the middle kind of takes away from it. Although the the hurricane itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, does Fox usually do weather? Well, almost every news station does weather, especially yeah, a Category not, Four hurricane. Is that, that's not a local Fox station, is it? Isn't that the well, it was, it was kind of big news, yeah. Yeah, big news, for sure. And I have a feeling that McDonald's is probably seeing a big sales decrease, right? They're, they're stabbing in the dark. Their food is not that good for how much you have to pay for it. McDonald's is selling Happy Meals to adults. What a twist! If not Shyamalan's. No. I don't understand why they all have an extra set of eyes. Do you? No idea. It's this cactus brand. Have you heard of that, Kristen? No. You're the hippest one of us. Which is not saying a lot. I think it's Kanye and somebody else. And they point out that uh, a hoodie. What do you think a hoodie from that cactus brand would cost you? $50. $1,000. The level one hoodies are way cheaper. <laughs> Store oh, level quality one tech. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a, an interesting study that was done uh, about genitals. <laughs> Women make assumptions about men's personality traits and behaviors based on pictures of their uh, junk <laughs> study finds. Here's a TLDR. They like them long and thick. <laughs> and unkempt, bad, gently groomed, good, completely shaved, narcissism. They expect mm. narcissism from that. They also assigned narcissism to all the small traits. Mm. Yeah. These were college girls who volunteered for the study, and you were wondering where did they source the images? Of course, Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably their DMs, unfortunately. I always so I learned about the concept of like on OnlyFans and stuff, the rating. I think we talked about that, right? The D rating. So if you sign up to a certain girl's thing, she was like, oh, you get a free rating. So you snap a pic, send it to her, and she rates it. And I wonder if any of them were ever like, do you ever get a low rating? <laughs> How bad would that destroy your confidence? Uh, hot tip, nobody wants that photo. Nobody. That researcher did. Yeah. <laughs> now we've got a big uh, book banning thing. Now it turns out this is not currently banned, but it had been banned during the 2021 school year. Pennsylvania school district accused of banning girls who code book series because girls don't code. Mm. Yeah. yeah. This is, this is criminal. I mean, this is what happens when you ban books. You're going to have stuff that's caught up in it. That does not need to be caught up in it. Which is why you shouldn't mess with it at all. Right. Yeah, exactly. This I remember is... my parents, they were very religious and they very heavily restricted what I could watch on television, but books were fair game. And I think that did more for my education than anything else yeah. in my development. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm not allowed to read this. I'll read them all. <laughs> you know, like to kill a mockingbird is on most of the schools banned book list. Cause it's like children are not ready for that. And it's like, I've got some news about reality for you. Well, I think it's cause they use some racist language. Wow. In it, right. And, and like, the whole idea is like, no, we must not show them that. But we're showing it to them in the worst possible light. Yeah. The the way the it's moral, framed is, yeah. is not a positive thing. And kids can understand that. I mean, there's a lot of racist language in Tom Sawyer. If you just want to, you know, control F find and not look at the context. And even if kids can't understand that, wouldn't that be a great time as a parent to sit down with moment. them and be like, hey, let's talk about this. Yeah. Because there's a reason we don't use those words anymore. And, you know, like. Every book your kid reads should probably get that attention. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, I, it, I couldn't do it for Harry Potter. <laughs> but everything else, I, I would try to make the effort if I was trying to rear a child. There, Harry, there, Harry Potter's, there should be mud blood. There, there is one theme in Harry Potter that I think you would like, and that is it's kind of anti-government, sort of very anti-government. Yeah, it makes fun of the Ministry of Magic a lot. There is no Ministry of Magic. <laughs> no, mud blood is like a... A term they use for people who are born to muggle parents, but they're wizards. I think uh, garden variety racists have also used that. So. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh no, really? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be surprised that it's J.K. Rowling. 
Oh, no. uh, well, uh, public libraries, man, what a great resource they are. You can go there to get books, obviously, but now they have media that you can get like DVDs, you can get music, you can learn to do new tasks. Sometimes they have like workshops. You can shoot heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle Library will allow staff to administer over opioid overdose reversing. If I was a library staff member, and they told me, hey, you might need to, I'd be like, I'm not a doctor. That's Here's not the... under my job description. Well, that's a good point. In fact, I cannot force you to. It is a voluntary program, but apparently they're asking to be able to do it. Some of the library workers. They have I... quite of these, few of these kind of things around our town as well. Yeah, I think the, the local library does more to hold the community together in rural areas than most people want to admit. From 2019 to 2022, the Seattle Public Libraries, I don't know how many of there are. There are probably several, right? In the For city. Seattle, yeah. Uh, 42 overdoses. Wow. So, obviously, homeless people, you know, it's they a place to go. Yeah. It's got air conditioning or, or heat or whatever. So, I wouldn't, I would think that you're opening yourself up to uh, liability there, right? I guess, yeah. Possibly. They, I guess, but I mean, if they were going to die and you didn't do anything, maybe that's. But better. they don't have to. They, they've made that clear. Yeah. Like, it is not the librarian's job. Okay. You, as far as you have to go is 911. You don't even have to touch them if you don't want to. Which. I'd be a little afraid. Like, what if I did it wrong? I don't know yeah. how Narcan is administered, I, but. I think it's like, a, isn't it like an EpiPen type? Just blast them and. A lot, yeah. A lot of the time the Good Samaritan laws would protect you anyways. Like, well, I was trying to help them. Yeah. It ended badly, but that's okay. You tried. This one may have turned out to be a bit of a nothing burger, but I think as a modern educator, you got to be, <laughs> you know, tone deaf. yeah, you got to be more aware of this kind of stuff. Second grader was instructed to send picture of you doing homework, reading homework in the bathtub. Parents say, uh, it turns out, yeah, this was this was innocent, but uh... what was the, the so I saw the image, but I didn't see the full context of it. The instruction was give send me a picture of you in the bathtub doing your homework. So the kid was supposed to get in the bathtub. The parent was supposed to take a picture and then they were supposed to send it to the teacher. That's so weird. Yeah, it's very weird. Yeah. Now they said like, oh, no, no, no. They were supposed to be fully clothed, but you just saw the instructions there on the video. Oh, it didn't say it. it yeah, that's that's the that. image I saw. And I was like, that's a little weird. Now here's the crazy thing about it. So these are, you're looking at the parents there. Oh, I missed it by a little bit. But you're, you're seeing the parents there who raised an alarm about this. Now, like, we're not comfortable with that. And... After it's all hashed out, the school administrator said, we think you should withdraw your student from the school. And they're like, no, we're not doing that. Like our student, our, our kid likes it there. They got friends there. And he was like, well, as an administrator, I'm removing your kid from the school. So raises think about this kind of stuff and you're out. It wasn't a public school. Wow. Well, it was a super crazy distraction. That's a uh, much ado about nothing when it could have just been like, oh, sorry, that was a mistake. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, I could see the administrator if the parents didn't call and say, is this weird? And it's like, no, it was like the assignment was just to see if you could follow directions. But they also said that uh, this was a this was not something that teacher came up with. This was a curriculum that they purchased mm -hmm. and that many schools use this, at which point, since this is a private school, I'm saying to myself, what am I paying you for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, the vehicle supply chains are still a problem, but it's not the parts that you would expect. However, you know how they'll they'll be like, well, we're just going to ship this one without a stereo because we can't get it. I bet they will never ship one without this, <laughs> right? Ford can't get enough blue oval batches. Supply chain shortages pile up. Oh, man. What if you start getting the Chinese knockoff ones and it's like feared? <laughs> <laughs> Ford. <laughs> feared Tef. There's an entrepreneur in Mexico who's like, my time to shine has come. Or they're all just uh, like, you know, Play-Doh that's been baked. Clearly yeah. homemade. It's a shrinky dink. I alluded to this one earlier, but, you know, we got that CIA podcast and they're like, no, nah, we just do normal stuff. The CIA just invested in a woolly mammoth resurrection technology. Ah! Why? So that they can clone Putin. Why would anyone want that? <laughs> Who, we have that? we have one that no one likes now. Does Putin have mammoth blood? <laughs> That would explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we have to start spreading that misinformation online immediately. The algorithm is like, don't know what to do to parse closed captions. Error, error, error. Putin has mammoth blood. 
And the other part of that rumor is that he has a staff that he has to be shaved three times a day <laughs> just to be presentable for the wool. This is, you think this is too hot? The next two are definitely too hot. Yeah, this is too hot. Yeah. Right, well, that's it's not it. really tech related at all. That's it for you plebs. This is the nonsense section. No, that's true. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. We will, uh, we will say we would give the next three stories only, and it's not because we don't love you. It's because the YouTube will not tolerate it. It's sort of weird, though. I mean, it's just, it's just. Uh... It's also because we don't love you as much as we love Patreon. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for, for hanging watching. out. Happy Friday. Bye. Oh, I don't actually have to stop. Yeah, you don't thing. actually have to stop. We're there's a clap there for our editors. Sorry if you're wearing headphones. So I love this one. And there's a little bit more to it if you think this was just a, an average run-of-the-mill gaff. <laughs> Where is Jackie? President Biden calls out during a dead congresswoman during speech. He I didn't see the full clip. He forgot she died. It's weird that he forgot she died because when she died, she got the presidential letter of condolences with Biden's signature on it. And I think he tweeted. Well, his staff tweeted. Let's be honest. None of them tweet for themselves. That's kind of the point. Yeah. It's all just theater. But yeah, she's dead. She never got to see her big moment. And unfortunately, I guess that's her. She doesn't look that old. Relative to the rest of them. But <laughs> yeah, is not saying a lot. Oh, that's our breaking news. Oh, no, more hurricane. Great. We, uh, every time we record with these, there's anytime there's a breaking news, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> But what did Elon Musk do now? Don't want to see the red banner. Oh, he got his penis stuck where? Oh, <laughs> red banner. And some lady from a robotics firm. <laughs> and, uh, well, he, does, he doesn't get stuck there. He, <laughs> he sticks and moves. Yeah. <laughs> this one is hilarious because we already talked about the previous story where there was like, oh, no, people were selling secrets. And it's like, no, nah, it's just the feds. Just the feds are fishing hard and trying to find people with weak or weak minds mental disabilities i don't know what you're going to call it but they're willing to to bite that hook <laughs> yahoo went with the headline army's first trans officer indicted for spying for russia but it was straight up one of those things where it's like hey we got a bunch of money we want to buy stuff if if you have stuff to sell and it was patient medical records because they're actually a doctor and they have access to stuff but uh it's worse than that well actually the husband was the doctor yeah, yeah. this person was somewhere in the military but uh or maybe it's vice versa. Anyway, the crazy thing about it, if you read the quotes, because they're like, oh, we're very committed. We believe in Russia. We hate what the U.S. is doing. We want to do anything we can to help the Russian effort. Like, mm. wh where does that come from? I, the other question is like, Russia is kind of notably anti-LGBTQ. Like, yeah. Yeah, why yeah, would not... you ever put your hat in that ring when you're a member of that community? And you have to wonder, like, why are they being so nice to me? And, of course, the reason is because they were feds. Mm -hmm. Russia was not involved in any way. That's weird. Terrifying. So weird. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you're the KGB, you're taking notes. It's like, okay, but how did you find this person? <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder. Like, I was watching one of those uh, interrogation videos, and it was a guy who was a hitman. He was like, well, I knew I needed help, so I just went to this guy I knew from work. Like, what gives you that <laughs> confidence to make that first approach? Oh. I would and, like to commit some light treason. Yeah. Are oh. you in... <laughs> Now, I don't want to really kill anybody, but I'll sell some secrets. And some medical records. Yeah. With. It's like, mm. Could you give me a quote on nuclear secrets? <laughs> and finally, uh, I've not watched any of this. Have you guys checked it out at all? I have not watched it. I've heard mixed reviews about it. I'll probably check it out. I like that kind of thing. But as we know about uh, Mr. Dahmer and his past, there was one thing about him that was factual. But now it's too dangerous to say. Netflix removes LGBTQ tag from Dahmer, which I think there was their their comment was worse than removing the tag, which was well viewers said this is not the representation they were looking for. But okay. what, what we've learned and what I certainly believe, because I can't imagine being like that, is that it's not a choice, right? Yeah. That's the whole point. So statistically, eventually you'd get a serial killer, right? Why is that bad? It is weird that they put a tag on it, I guess. It's weird that I guess the tag exists at all because you don't have a straight tag. Oh, wow. <laughs> now we're getting into some... You're not allowed to say that. We're getting into some bedrock truth. <laughs> we, should, is... we should have a straight tag. To put on. <laughs> uh, 
No, I haven't heard anything. The only thing I've heard about it is this particular controversy keeps popping up on Twitter, but I haven't seen anyone actually talking about it as like a work of art. I can't, I, I can't wait for agencies to embrace this kind of thing and just manufacture outrage and no one actually cares. That's already happening. Well, could that be this? Could be this, yeah. yeah that that was, maybe they were like, no one's going to care about our Dahmer movie, so let's just do this instead. Here we are talking about it. Do yeah. we? I mean, do we want to go even deeper down the rabbit hole and say that someone exhibiting the behavior like Dahmer it was in part that behavior was a result of societal pressure because he you know was that way I don't think we can <laughs> yeah. there are plenty of people who feel that pressure and don't kill people yeah 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 I don't remember I wonder if this is in the show it might have been a different killer but there was one guy who uh abducted a guy I, I think a young boy or like in his teens or whatever and the kid, he drugged him, I think. Right? They keep him real like tipsy while he did whatever he did to him. And this kid escaped. Oh, I know. Naked. This yeah. And the cops found him and they were like, look at this weird naked kid. I bet, he's, I bet he belongs to this house. Let's take him back. And Dahmer <laughs> was cool enough to be like, oh, he's drunk. Let me just get and him the guy, back. And the kid, guy was like, please, like, yeah. I'm, I'm being abused. Help me. And the cops were like, yeah, whatever. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. That's just how these kind of relationships go, kid. <laughs> like, no. Now that that was LGBTQ discrimination. Yeah. Because yeah. if it had been a, a woman. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's that's why this is too hot. But also horrifying and kind of horrifying and reflective as us as a society. And it's just I don't know. Well, I think everything about the Dahmer story qualifies. Yeah. Really yeah. The worst. <laughs> I don't like to uh, to read too much about like serial killers. Some some women. A friend of mine, like, she relaxes to podcasts about, like, murderous mm. people. And I don't yeah. get that. Thinking about being that helpless is not fun. No. Yeah. It's like, that's not, I don't know. So, but, but that, the true crime podcast kind of stuff, that's all really popular. I listen, my interrogation stuff is just fascinating. Uh -huh. It's amazing. All right. Well, you guys don't get an extra outro. Yeah. Sorry. Bye. Thanks for giving us money. Bye.